in this video we are talking about how to solve ratios and proportions with word problems. I have a few examples for us so let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about first what is a ratio and proportion. If you know anything about equivalent fractions then you already know about ratio and proportions. That is really all that we are dealing with here. So if we have a fraction like three-fifths and we want to know what that is equivalent to over 50 then we can use ratio and proportions. So one way that we can solve this is by just simply looking at the two numbers that they gave us in the denominator and figuring out what would we have to multiply times 5 to get to 50. That would be times 10. And so we would do the same thing here. Multiply 3 times 10, and that would give us 30 for our numerator. Now there is another way that we can solve these. And it's especially useful if we don't have a direct multiplication that we can use to get from one fraction to the other, and that is cross multiplying. So we would multiply diagonally. 3 times 50 gives us 150. And then 5 times our unknown number would go on the other side of the equation. So for this, I'm going to write 5x. I'm going to use that x as a variable, an unknown number. Then we would divide both sides by 5, and we would get x equals 30. So you see in both methods that we get the same answer. Let's see how this works in word problems. Here we have a word problem where Grant bought 7 apples for $8.75. At this rate, how much would 14 apples cost? So we know that we need two fractions that are going to be equivalent to each other, but the tricky part about word problems is sometimes it's hard to know where each of those numbers goes. So what I like to use is a chart. So I'm going to set up a chart here, and I'm going to have new and old on this side. This new row is going to represent the new ratio that is being asked, and the old is going to represent the ratio that I am given. And then my items, my two different types of items are going to go up here for each column. So I see that we are dealing with apples and we are also dealing with cost. So those are going to be my two items. Now I can flip these around and put cost first and apple second. This chart just helps us to organize our numbers so that we know how to set up our fraction. Okay, so in the ratio that they gave us already, they gave us seven apples, so that's gonna go here. That's the old number of apples. And then the cost of those was 875. So that's gonna go here in the cost column and again in the old row. Now we are going to talk about the new question that is being asked. At this rate, how much would 14 apples cost? Well, again, that 14 is gonna go in the apples column, and then this is our unknown cost. So that's where we're gonna put our variables. So right there, we've got 14 over seven, x over 875. So let's go ahead with our cross multiplication. We're gonna multiply seven times x, that's just gonna give us seven x, and that equals whatever 14 times 8 0.75 is. So let's figure out what that is real quick. 8.75 times 14. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 7 is 28 plus 2 more is 30. 4 times 8 is 32 plus 3 more is 35. And then we've got 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 7 is 7. 1 times 8 is 8. Now when we add that up, let's see, we get... We get, we're gonna drop that decimal in two spaces from the right since we have two decimals in our problem. So we get 122.50, so 122.50. Now we're gonna divide by seven on both sides of the equation so that we get rid of that seven over there and we just have X left over. So now we need to figure out what is 122.50 divided by seven. All right, seven can go into 12 just once. When we subtract, we get five, bring down our two. Seven can go into 52 seven times, that gives us 49. Bring down our five, and then seven can go into 35 five times. Oops, I forgot to bring up my decimal there. That does go in evenly, so uh, since I do have a zero here, I wanna go ahead and fill that in, especially since we're talking about money, we wanna round to the nearest cent or have those two place values after the decimal point. So 1750, in other words, it would cost $17.50 to buy those 14 apples. Now you may have noticed with our original fractions, 
we set them up again here, that 14 over 7 could be reduced. We can reduce both of these by 7, right? 14 divided by 7 is 2, 7 div divided by 7 is 1. So this is essentially 2 over 1. Now we can use that equivalent fraction, 1 times 8.75 gives us 8.75, and so then that means to figure out this part, 2 times 8.75 would give us our x. And when we multiply that 8.75 times 2, we do get 17.5 or 1750. So we would get the same answer that way as well. Okay, we've got one more example here. Here we have a scale drawing of a rectangular room is 12 inches long by 18 inches wide. The actual width of the bedroom is 144 inches. What is the length of the bedroom? Okay, so I'm going to use that same chart that we've been using. However, I'm going to use some different terms over here. Instead of new and old, what makes more sense for this problem is to write actual and scale because they gave us a scale, the dimensions of a scale drawing. So somebody has taken an actual bedroom and then sort of reduced down its size proportionately into a drawing so that we could fit it on a piece of paper. So that is the scale dimensions of the room, the length and width. And then we also have the actual dimensions, the length and width of the room. So we are talking about width and length for our items across the top here. So again, this is just a tool to help us set up those proportions when we're not sure how to set up the numbers in those two fractions. All right, so for the scale drawing, we've got 12 inches long, so that's gonna go here, and then eight inches wide, so that's gonna go here. And then for the actual width of the bedroom, we have 144, and then we want to find the length. So that's where our variable is gonna go. So let's set up our fractions. 144 over eight equals x over 12. All right, we've got eight x for the one diagonal multiplication, and then we've got 144 times 12. Let's see what that is. Two times four is eight, two times four is eight, two times one is two, drop down my zero, and then we've got four, four, one. All right. Add these up, and then it looks like we're looking at 1,728. And then for our last step, we're going to divide each side by eight, so those eights will cancel out. So let's see what 1,728 divided by eight gives us. So eight can go into 17 twice, that's 16. And we bring down our two, eight can go into 12 once, and that gives us eight, and then when we subtract, we get four, bring down our eight, and then eight can go into 48 six times. That does come out evenly for this one. So X equals 216, which means that the length of the room is 216 inches. I hope this method with the chart helps you when you are trying to solve for ratios and proportions. Thanks so much for watching. Please let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. And also check out some of the links in the description. I have the link to my pre-algebra series along with a ton of other videos that kind of go along with this topic. So take a look for those and I will see you next time.